Um, I, I have this thing broken into three parts in terms of learning objectives. Uh, one of the first is, in order for us to talk about designing for fire resistance in the IBC, we have to understand a relationship between the occupancy groups that are identified in the code, the type of construction that we're dealing with, and of course then as part of that, uh, it, it comes together with regard to the fire resistance. And so we want to make sure we understand that relationship. Uh, the second thing is, in, in terms of that fire resistance, is we do have to look specifically at portions of the code where it will identify the, the ex, uh, specific types of fire resistance that is going to be expected to be met in order to build a building based on occupancy and based on type of construction. And finally, of course, when you have the building code specifying fire resistances for uh, certain elements, uh, there has to be some means or method in order to uh, uh, how to meet that requirement, how to uh, accomplish it. And of course, the third part of the of the presentation will in fact be uh, showing how to meet those uh, requirements, what the methods are that are recognized in the uh, international code. Now, I, I based this presentation on the 2018 edition of the International Building Code. It is the latest printed edition that's available from the Inter International Code Council. But I want to acknowledge to you that to a large extent, if you're in some jurisdictions where you're still perhaps using the 2015 edition or even an earlier edition, uh, for example, I'm, I'm in, I live in the state of Georgia and we are still under the 2012 edition of IBC, but we're expecting to move towards the 2018 in the very near future. Uh, I want you to know that most of this material will still be applicable uh, regardless of which code edition. The, ba the basic premises is all, are all the same. They have not changed with any significance uh, over the course of those uh, previous editions to the present uh, 2018 edition. Uh, there may be a few nuances uh, and uh, where, where I can think of and note some, I'll try to rem remember to tell you about them, but for the most part, the information is applicable across the board. So one of the things, and when we talk about fire resistance in the building code, one of the things we have to be conscious of is, well, what exactly or why are we even bringing it into play? And it's done because of several goals that the building code and, and even in the old building codes have always had this premise. And one of the first is that it, wanna, it wants to regulate how big it wants to let you build the building, how tall or how big in footprint area that you want to allow it to, to be. And I want you to think of that in terms of the fact that if we're going to build, and I use this expression when I teach classes, uh, if we're going to build a bonfire, we got to, got to kind of know how much combustibles we're going to have in that uh, bonfire. And if we're wanting to restrict the size of it as the size of the building gets better, bigger, then we're in fact going to have to uh, provide certain features such as either reducing the amount of combustibles or increasing the fire resistance in order to let that building get in a, a bigger size. The second thing in terms of uh, goals of the IBC is to protect the occupants. Uh, we're putting people in these buildings. Uh, sometimes they're very large in footprint area, and if there isn't a, a fire emergency, we're wanting to make sure that we provide some mechanism to reduce, uh, excuse me, increase the amount of time people may have to get out of the building. The same concept is true if we're going to build the buildings taller, that if we put people on the 40th and 50th floor of buildings, uh, there's going to be some sense that if they're going to have to uh, uh, evacuate from the building in an emergency condition, that lo and behold, the building is going to maintain its uh, stability under those fire conditions so people can face uh, safely uh, uh, egress out of the building. A third thing is property exposure, where you put, build buildings uh, near each other or close to each other. Uh, any one building, if it has a fire incident, it does in fact pose a exposure issue to an adjacent building. And of course, uh, the adjacent building has provisions that are looking that if it's going to be built near property lines, it needs to protect itself from the adjacent property because it doesn't know what or may, may take place on that property. And then finally, the last goal, and of course a very important one, is the fire service. Uh, when, we, when we have our emergency responders respond to an emergency event, especially a fire event, uh, we want to ensure that the building uh, doesn't uh, become become uh, a death trap, that it doesn't come down around their heads, that they in fact can go in and uh, safely uh, perform their uh, firefighting techniques uh, in order to uh, bring the building under control and reduce damage to adjacent properties, reduce damage to that property, and sometimes, of course, it even includes trying to, to uh, assist the occupants in evacuation. 
So when we when we look at this thing of several of the parts of the building code that I feel like we need to look at, uh, or or what you want to take a look at is going to be occupancy type, construction type, fire separation distances from adjacent properties, and then any fire suppression that may be placed in the building, such as automatic sprinkler protection. And those factors play a part in just how the code determines what kind of fire resistance ratings may be required uh, for the particular building uh, under consideration.